Hello Ratbags, it's Jade. Welcome to a special video today taking a look at everything to do with survival on console. I've covered survival games for five years now. I've delivered to you every single game that's come out on a console, Xbox or PlayStation, in the last four or five years. And so that's going to continue in 2021. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you've got the notification bell dinged, follow me on Twitter, come and join my Discord and let me take you through what you need to know. There are so many releases coming, particularly in the first half of the year. It's jam-packed with either PC ports, brand new games, or big DLC for some of your favourites. So, let's go. Let's take a look at 2021 for the console scrub master race. It's kicking off with Subnautica. The price goes up on PC for below zero on the 5th of January, and the devs have stated multiple times they're looking to release the console versions at the same time that PC comes out of early access. It's been two years since below zero hit early access, and so it's just about time for it to release. I fully expect this to come out full release at some point in January. I think it'll go up to full price on the 5th, and then you can expect a final release a week or so later, and that'll be available on Xbox. Xbox, PlayStation and even Nintendo Switch. If you don't know, the original Subnautica is being ported over to the Switch version, so I fully expect to be able to buy a double pack with Below Zero and Subnautica as well. But of course, for Xbox and PlayStation players, you'll be looking forward to playing the semi-sequel to the first game. It had its problems with performance on console, there's no doubt about it, and they did take some time to solve it, particularly on Xbox. But undoubtedly this is one of the best survival games out there i regularly put it in my top three each and every year and i definitely can't wait to show you guys more of below zero a brand new storyline with npcs brand new quests lots of new creatures lots of new biomes to explore set on the same planet in a far different area it's going to have a lot going for it and i can't wait to show you guys the current state of it on pc is it's got all its content bar the final mission or final part and yeah i'm going to be showing this to you guys over the next few weeks throughout january Hello? I've even got the price, it's going to be $29.99, you can work that out for your own currency. From the depths of an alien sea to the wilderness of space, Breath Edge is coming to Xbox, PlayStation and again the Nintendo Switch hopefully very soon. Now I've not listed a date exactly except for quarter one but this was earmarked to come out in November as a full release and again the devs have said they're releasing it the same thing as Subnautica that consoles will get the same version as PC for 1.0 release. It is more of a comedic take a mix between maybe sort of satisfactory portal and of course Subnautica set in space where you'll have lots of flying chickens lots of robots and there's a good bit of combat and action in it as well. It's been developed for the last two years or so and I'm really looking forward to this one with lots of big story, lots of chapters and it's looking like they've got more creative options coming into the game as well. So definitely a bit more of a humorous take and I can't wait to give this one a proper playthrough. It is a full on survival game though, expect lots of crafting and obviously managing your resources and of course that oxygen. No full price listed just as yet, but it's a little bit cheaper than Subnautica, so I expect it to pretty much be about the same price, more or less, $25 or $29.99. I'll be very surprised if it's more expensive than that. As I said, coming out to consoles at the same time, that's the original plan as PC. Hopefully that will be the case when it appears in quarter one. And just like Subnautica, this is a single player only experience at the moment. There are no plans to add multiplayer, unfortunately, but I don't think this one will definitely need it. It's got a lot of story, lots of cutscenes, and looks like it's got lots of good humour, as I said. I so want to blast the cow into space! Still on course for a early release of the year, Conan Exiles Isle of Sipta should be coming to Xbox and PlayStation very, very soon. But what kind of DLC experience are you going to get? Well, it seems like it's changing. Just before Christmas, they announced plans where they're going to be expanding the DLC, and they've kind of said this all along, but they gave more of an outline of what to expect. They're increasing the landmass, they're mixing up the grind, so it's not as terrible trying to get some thralls, as it has received quite a lot of negative feedback already, the DLC, on Steam. So by the time it does hit console, it won't all be complete though. They're going to be releasing this as DLC and then it's going to be updated just like Conan Exiles was over many years. So it's almost like a Conan Exiles 1.5. Big changes you need to know are you will be able to move your characters across from the Exiled Lands to the Isle of Sipta and back and forth. They are adding NPC encampments to the Isle of Sipta as well. That was a big feedback loop that they got, they just didn't have enough of. And they're pretty much trying to make it a bit more interesting. They're keeping some core mechanics like the Storm, but the rewards that you're going to get are much better. And they'll be adding new dungeons as well as a brand new religion. So that'll be pretty cool and interesting. I have to say when I tried this out on PC, I was bitterly disappointed. It 
it wasn't available on consoles as well. I wasn't given a heads up that was going to be the case even though I had early access to it and overall I had just quickly decided I wasn't going to cover it until it had more content put into it because I realised it would be just a bit of a boring grindy mess. Conan Exiles and Funcom kind of slipped up in 2020, maybe not all their own doing, Corona has hit a lot of game developers hard, but I would say they definitely didn't respond in the right ways and have got a lot to prove in 2021, how they communicate and what type of content and what type of updates are coming and also making sure that parity is going on with consoles. They've started working out, they've employed a brand new port team based in the UK and that should hope alleviate the time gaps in between some of the content and fingers crossed they'll be updating and keeping the parity going and hopefully fixing finally the issues that have played Xbox massively for a lot of players. So yeah, Isla Sipta apparently according to their community manager very recently still on calls to come to consoles the early part of 2021. I've probably put this game about three times in different videos as incoming and pray to the gods is actually incoming in 2021. It's near the end of its early access life. Originally they were going to release just as it was but they decided to add a few more bosses, add a few more bits of gameplay to it. That's taken nearly a year and a bit but they are on course for a full release and they're going to be doing the same thing as some of the other games I mentioned, releasing it on Xbox and PlayStation at the same time as coming out as 1.0 on PC. Now if you've not seen this game, it's pretty much a cross between a survival experience and Shadow of the Colossus. You will be fighting these giant massive creatures, trying to find their weak spots while roaming around a huge open world, gathering resources, keeping yourself warm away from that cold which will kill you. It is a full survival game, you're going to have minions as well, there's going to be lots of smaller creatures, encampments and lots of loot to go and find. And it does look like that extra time has been worth it, they're adding two brand new more bosses, lots more story content and the polish that has gone into the game over the last year has been pretty fantastic. It's going to be available on Xbox and the PlayStation, Pray for the Gods will be out very very soon and predicting by the end of March. Once again though it is a single player only experience. Back in December we were all hyped about the announcement of Ark 2 but of course we've still got unfinished business with Ark 1. Genesis 2, the final part of the DLC, will be coming in March unless there's any more delays and it should be the final major piece of content we see for Arc 1. It really will be that case, I can't see them adding any more content after this, all work will be on Arc 2 which isn't scheduled until 2022. The final send off for this though has you on a ship and it seems to be going to an alien planet, it looks like that alien planet is going to be where we end up with Vin Diesel in Arc 2 and we're going to be fighting Rockwell as we explore his mix of mechanical, semi-bionic and organic creatures on this huge space station hurtling through space. The Horizon Zero Dawn and Halo comparisons have been done to death and I'm still looking forward to it surprisingly. I haven't played art properly in a while, I really have just kind of put this to the side so hopefully 2021 is the year that this game draws me back in. Expect lots of fantastic new creatures, it's what Ark does best, lots of unique biomes and let's just hope it's not a buggy mess like the rest of the last DLCs. Some things to look out for, a full map, no teleporting like Genesis 1. You're not going to be able to buy this separately, you do need to own the Genesis Season Pass if you want to play it. And of course it is going to offer the final thrilling conclusion to the game that's been running now for 5 years. In fact June 2021 will be 6 years since Ark first arrived in Early Access. So yeah, let's hope it's a good one, let's hope it's stable and the devs have spent that extra time well making sure the console ports particularly are good. Xbox, Playstation of course. Nintendo Switch fans, forget it, that game is dead, it hasn't received an update in two years, don't expect ever to see any DLC either. Do let me know if you'll be playing Gen 2, what are you most looking forward to and is this going to be on your radar knowing that the sequel is only maybe a year away so after. I think the hype for this is going to be absolutely huge seeing how it will tie into the future game and I expect this to be the biggest DLC yet to date for Ark, surprisingly after so many years. Let's go Rockwell, let me see how Doctor Who David Tennant does in this computer game role. Last Oasis has been bumping along on PC early access for nearly a year now and it is going to be coming to the Xbox Games preview program. 
So PlayStation fans, you will not be able to play this until it comes much closer to full release. They've had a bumpy road on PC, a huge amount of interest when it first launched, and then lots of problems with the servers and just getting the game actually stable. Since then, the devs have actually really worked superbly hard. I would say they're probably the most consistent of this year, each and every single week having an update, adding more walkers, more ways to play this nomadic survival game that is very focused on PvP. But there are lots of changes going into it to make it a little bit more screwed friendly so you can expect maybe to live the life of a trader a little bit easier at peace. I'm very interested how they adapt the controllers for this game. I loved it. You can go and check out all the content I did on PC, even when I did get a bit toxic. And expect more toxicity when I'll be raiding your walkers in the future when it comes in the early part of 2021 to Xbox. It will be cross-play with PC as well, so there'll be plenty of players playing this game. Green Hell will finally make its appearance on an Xbox or a PlayStation. Surprisingly, it came out on a Switch just before Christmas, and unfortunately, it was a horrific mess for me. It just really didn't have a lot of good performance, and I found that the colours and just the look of it was really mediocre on Switch. In fact, it made me feel pretty nauseous. Now, they've had an update or so, and people are telling me it's actually in a bit of better condition, and let's hope the Xbox and PlayStation versions can leverage a little bit more than the Switch. It will be such a shame if the console versions do end up being a horrific mess because this game is one of the best survival games I've played on PC. Really hardcore, journeying through the Amazon forest, lots of story, surviving against all the odds, creatures and native indigenous people. The game came out with early access a good while ago but they've still got huge plans for it. They're adding some free content called the Amazonia updates which are going to add a bunch of new stuff to it, new biomes to explore, new ways to play the game, new creatures and all sorts of new horrible nasty cuts, gashes and diseases for you to cure. As I said, I really didn't get on well with the Switch version of the game. Let's hope the Xbox and PlayStation versions are going to be in a much better state. Predictably coming before the first half of the year finishes, so I'm expecting it around maybe March, April again. But undoubtedly one of the hardest and most unique single player survival experiences. Oh, did I say single player? Nope, they've added co-op in that time as well, so you can expect to be able to play it with your friends when it eventually comes out on all platforms. Quite simply, the only game that could possibly knock off Ark as being the number one survival console game out there, Rust, is coming. It was meant to release in 2020, but COVID and certain other issues have kept it back. But it does look like it is going to be here, with Gary Newman, the creator of Rust, stating that it's got a 25% chance of appearing in quarter one, 50% chance of appearing before the end of the first half, and 100% chance it will come out in 2021. It's been made or ported over by Double Eleven. They'll have full control over it. Expect everything you get from the PC version. You will have rentable or private services servers to play, all the full-on experiences, there's going to be all the updates that Rust has had so far and you can expect them to receive the content as well as PC, maybe just a few weeks or a month behind PC in the future. Rust recently announced 9 million sales on PC, making it one of the biggest and best survival games out there and I fully predict this game to overtake the PvP market on console. I think a lot of ARK players will be switching to this and DayZ of course too. Very different games, but of course Rust offers that unique experience, that PvP-ness that no one else can really match or offer, and I will be devoting a significant, significant amount of my channel over to Rust when it hits Xbox or PlayStation. I'm going to go out on a limb and say I expect to see this before the end of April. There will be betas as well before it comes out, so expect lots of testing to be going on. And these guys are proper developers, they're not going to just rush it out, they're going to make sure it's the best it can be, with Gary Newman boasting he wants it to be the best survival game on console you can play. So, for no clickbait nonsense, well, maybe just a little bit of Belle Dufine, I will be there every step of the way to tell you exactly what to expect with Rust and how to play the game once it's out. The next four games I have covered in my most recent brand new survival games incoming, so I won't dwell, dwell on it too much. But we've got the Eternal Cylinder, a crazy unique experience where you can mutate a little creature to get through different biomes and different world. Kind of puzzle, kind of platformy, but it is a survival game at heart as well, as you avoid a gigantic massive rolling pin that is going to pretty much go across the land, wiping out anything in its path. I told you it's pretty bonkers, I'm fully expecting this to come out in the first half of the year, so before June we will get a chance to play this on an Xbox, Playstation and the Epic Game Store. It will be a single player only experience, but definitely one of the weirdest and most wonderful I think we'll see. 
ancestors show that there are a market for games where you can be an animal and survive and a way the survival series is going to continue that when you take over a sugar glider but also other creatures as you run jump and explore a huge open world as it progresses through the ages if i've got that right you will be able to move on and try some missions and levels as other creatures a unique experience for sure and i'm predicting this to come out maybe even a little bit earlier than sort of june or july as they did have a demo that you could try out on steam a little while ago so it looks like it's in a, nearly a good state so yeah expect this to come out very very soon obviously a single player experience and it will be available for xbox and playstation if you're looking for more games to play with your friends trash sailors might do the job kind of like a rogue like where you're on a raft and you've got to protect it from all sorts of dangers obstacles and creatures as you gather resources to power it up you can play this with up to three or four friends i do believe and it is going to be coming to the nintendo switch and i do believe the xbox and playstation in the future as well the release date is some point in may on nintendo switch i expect that to be the same on pc and yeah hopefully it won't be too much longer before you can try this out on an xbox or PlayStation station. A more fun, colourful take and definitely something you can play with your friends, so an all good rounder co-op survival experience. Simply put, one of the biggest games I'm most looking forward to in 2021, Little Devil Inside. It's going to be a semi-open world RPG survival experience where you are pretty much a smaller monster hunter. You'll be going around all sorts of environments trying to find these big old creatures while finding little minions to take back your research and findings to your professor. Expect lots of humour, lots of nice art, lots of nice little cutscenes, but it is a survival game. There's going to be lots of focus on combat and upgrading and I'm definitely looking forward to this one. It's been actually in development for nearly six years years originally scheduled for the Wii U there is some bad news they originally said they're going to be coming out to all platforms and they will but it's going to be a PlayStation and PC exclusive at launch no Xbox release for a good few months I'm predicting at least six months to a year which is a bit shame but fingers crossed you guys get it to play I reckon this is going to be a surprise hit of the year single player experience of course and like I said only semi open world but the worlds do look gorgeous and I can't wait to play this definitely one of the top three games I look forward to in 2021 this next one is another PlayStation and PC exclusive. Tribes of Midgard offers 10 player co-op survival experience as you play Vikings. It's kind of a more of an RPG style old school vibe where you'll take on all sorts of stuff like gathering, foresting, pretty much doing all the survival mechanics, but then taking on giant massive giants protecting your village. And that's what makes it the survival experience, keeping your village alive, keeping it safe from attacks. Again, I got a chance to play this early on in the year and I liked what was there even when it was a bit bare bones. It looks like a lot of work's gone into it. Gearbox are now helping publish it and make it. So that is really good stuff. Obviously, a lot of money has gone into it to give it that extra bit of oomph. Expect lots of upgrades, lots of weapons and powers and definitely something really cool and interesting to play with a big group of your friends. No release date other than 2021, but I'm pretty sure I saw rumblings of a sort of May or April release, so I'm fully expecting to see this in the early part of the year. So that is all the confirmed games coming to console survival ones that I've actually seen absolute 100% saying they're going to come. The next lot are maybe appearing, but we've got no specific date or they've had significant delays and issues. And obviously Dying Light 2 is definitely one of them. Announced years ago, then told in January last year that there would be a delay when it was meant to come out in April. Since then, we heard, heard too much news. The last post just before Christmas stating they're looking forward to showing more of the game. It's had a troubled development. They've gone through multiple creative directors. It seems like the game could be a bit of a hot mess, but we'll have to wait and see. The first one has obviously ended up being a bit of a cult classic. And I think you guys are definitely looking forward to surviving against the zombie hordes once more. So yeah, fingers crossed we'll get some news about this. Hopefully still first half of the year, but no concrete date just of yet and it will be appearing on xbox and playstation i kid you not this is probably one of the longest games that i've said to come into console and it just hasn't happened starbound was originally meant to appear on an xbox in 2016 it's had so many problems and issues since then and it does look like hopefully 2021 might be the year the recent update very recent just before christmas stated they are still working on it but they had huge problems trying to get the multiplayer to work correctly the single player experience was there if you don't know starbound is kind of a terraria ripoff but you can go to all sorts of different planets 
and the survival mechanics are definitely a little bit more important in the game. So I'm really looking forward to this one. It's something that I've been hyping up for years. And yeah, it's got a lot more going for it than I think a lot of people give it credit for. So yeah, Starbound will be coming not just the Xbox, PlayStation as well. But yeah, it could be a significant amount of time before we see it. I'm not predicting first half. At just some point, I'll be hopeful this game releases on console in 2021. If you like killing lots of dinosaurs and you don't want to grind, then maybe Second Extinction will be for you. Meant to be coming to the Xbox platforms as an exclusive, it's probably going to be part of the game preview. It's already on PC and Steam, it's been there for like 6 months or so, maybe nearly now, and it's been pretty successful. They've had a lot of good positive feedback, and I found it quite repetitive and boring after a first few hours, but I'm hopeful that updates have added a lot more to it. It's a big, huge world to go and explore, they're adding more and more for you to go and do all sorts of quests, gather resources as you upgrade your characters, your classes and unlock brand new weapons. If they can keep making it a little bit more friendly for single player people, I think it's onto a winner, but definitely a good game to play co-op, made by the same studio development team or part of the same one that made Generation Zero. So expect lots of explosions, lots of mutated dinosaurs and fingers crossed we'll see this appear on the next box in the near future. I'm going to say it's probably going to be the later half of the year though. Scavengers is going to be a free to play battle royale style experience but before you turn away and disgust hold up it's actually got a lot of survival mechanics into it I would say it's the closest you're going to get to something more like the ye old days of DayZ battle royale pretty much you're on an alien planet you've got to move around the map before these huge storms roll in they can take your life away if you get caught in one and then you're surviving not against just other players in teams of three but also all sorts of mutants and raiders and all sorts of weird creatures. You can hunt, you can gather resources, you can upgrade on the spot and the objective is obviously to make your escape to the big massive spaceship slash helicopter at the end. They recently had the technical test and it was pretty decent, I can't say too much but definitely I can see a future for this game and it has made me a little bit more excited about playing it. Obviously free to play, it will be on Steam probably first but I do fully expect them to make promise good on it coming to Xbox and Playstation in the near future as well. So lots of mutated bears as you can see from the creator or one of them at least of Halo series I'm fully expecting Scavengers to be a big hit once it finally releases and have smoothed out a lot of the rough edges that are currently there. So I'm on to the realms of like we've heard it before and it could be the year it appears but Atlas will probably make it to a PlayStation in the near future. Well we assume so. They did announce it would come to the PlayStation well they have said so but recently with Arc 2 being a console launch exclusive for Xbox maybe things have changed who knows but I am still projecting this to come out on the PlayStation. I think Atlas has had a lot of problems and issues but they seem to have been picking up a bit of steam, they've got a brand new creative lead behind it and for the last 5 months they've been updating pretty regularly and getting stuff going once more. Whether or not it's enough to make this MMO a really compelling experience I'm not too sure, I really haven't put a lot of time into it in the last year. But for sure it will I think come to PlayStation, like I said I can't see it though happening until maybe the end of 2021. Definitely on my list of checking out some old survival games to see how much they progress. So stay tuned for that where I spend a whole week playing some forgotten survival games to see where they're at in 2021. Now to be honest this is more hopeful than actually expecting it to launch in 2021 on console but Small Lands is a game I'm very excited about, a real competitor to Grounded but in a much bigger grander scope and very much more like an Ark or Conan experience with survival against lots of bugs, utilising them as pets and mounts and obviously just running around a huge garden as you survive. This game's actually been developed a long time, way before Grounded was originally and it's been taken on by new developers, new publishers and so it looks like it will actually be a thing. I've been talking to the devs a fair bit and I'm hopeful to give you some new exclusive stuff coming very soon. Go and check out the information I've already done recently showcasing some of the concept art. It does look really cool, expect lots of new armours, a little bit of a story and just lots of ways to survive and get about this garden. Realistically it will come to early access on PC this year but for Xbox and PlayStation fans it may end up being 2022 but you never know. They do have plans at least for console, they've stated they're going to bring it and they've got a good history of bringing lots of games to all platforms in the future as well. So fingers crossed Small Land makes it a little bit sooner than later. Now this one might only be for next gen consoles but Scrap Mechanic is kind of meant to be coming to consoles. I've once or twice I've mentioned it that it will appear probably on an Xbox in the future. Since then I think a lot of time has eroded. They've also been working a lot on their survival content and their next chapter. 
progress is slow with this game. It took them years to get the survival mode going and it kind of ended up dying a bit of a death very quickly. So I do hope that progress is going to be a lot faster and they do ramp up production a bit for a game that has been in development for nearly five years now. But Scrap Mechanic does offer something creative that no other game is really offering. And so if they can get that right, and even if it is only on an Xbox Series X or a PlayStation 5, I'll be down for playing it once more. And again, another game I've got to revisit and see how far it's progressed in the sort of seven or eight months since its release. An outside bet for it appearing on consoles before the end of the year, but like I said, I have seen plenty of interviews now stating that they're hoping to bring it in the future. Last year, Space Engineers did the unthinkable. It actually released on a console. Xbox got to try it, and it was a bit of a hot mess at the start. But they have worked diligently, trying to increase the performance and the capabilities so that you can actually build more than maybe just a trash can. And it does look like that has been more or less successful. Lots of DLC still going for the PC version, and have somehow managed to tie it all in together so that an Xbox controller can play this game. I'm fully expecting it to appear on the PlayStation at some point after April, that will be the one year anniversary of it being on Xbox. I think any exclusivity, that's what I'll do. These devs have had betas running on the Xbox, so I applaud them for that. And fingers crossed PlayStation fans get a chance to try it. And again, a bit more of a fantasy kind of hope is that Atomic Heart will be appearing on consoles before the end of the year. This is some mad Russian game, a little bit Bioshock-esque, and maybe with only very light survival elements in it. But I'm just really looking forward to trying this one out. They've said that it's going to be coming to consoles. And it does look a bit mad. Now there has been lots of controversies either from sort of snitches trying to say that the gameplay on show wasn't real gameplay and the devs haven't always acted in the best way. They even give me a copyright strike once just because I was criticising it. So fingers crossed though that's all behind them and 2021 is the year that we start seeing more news and hopefully some sort of release for this madcap post-apocalyptic game. It looks absolutely stunning and the last time I saw they did say it was come to Xbox and the PlayStation but I fully expect that to be next gen only when it does eventually appear. So yeah, fingers crossed, a slim chance at the end of the year. Now I hate to kind of leave on a sad note but I thought I'd better address it. The Forest will not be appearing on an Xbox, guys. It's something I've been hoping for for a number of time. They did do a few interviews over like 18 months ago stating that they were thinking about the game coming to Xbox. They didn't have an exclusivity deal with PlayStation, but it's taken them so long. Recently, with the news of the Sons of the Forest, the sequel coming, and they're going to be focusing on that, I really can't see them having the time to put this on Xbox. It was news to me that they did the port job themselves for PlayStation. They didn't get an outside crew to do it. So it does look like they really have going to be their hands filled with just the next sequel, and they're not going to have time to really make this for Xbox. We can only hope that Sons of the Forest isn't going to be a PlayStation exclusive, and it will be available for all platforms, but I don't expect that to come out to consoles until at least the end of 2022 either. Again, I regularly vote this as one of my favourite games of all time, specifically survival anyway. Fingers crossed we do see more news about it coming to console, at least the sequel anyway. But I thought I'd let you guys know, don't expect The Forest ever to really appear on an Xbox. I'd be 100% surprised if it did. It was the number 7th most downloaded PlayStation game in Europe and number 18th in America in 2019. Bigger than Ark, Conan and DayZ. So there's definitely a big appetite for this game, but fingers crossed we can see some news about that sequel. And just like my other video where I showed you brand new survival games incoming in 2021, I'm going to finish it off with the same game. State of Decay 3 doesn't have a date listed, but we can only hope it might be the end of 2021. I would love to see them put this in early access and really work with the community to add more features and stuff. It does look like it's really veering off from the main first two games. I'm hoping it's going to be a lot more survival experience, not necessarily just camping on building up your camps, although that is pretty unique as well. But yeah, as soon as we get any more information about this, this will be on my most hype list for sure, and I will be covering it as much as possible up to any release. Of course, Xbox only, don't expect this to appear on a PlayStation. And there we go. At the moment, that is what's listed. That is all the information I could find. I hope it's been beneficial. If it has, make sure you like the video. Go and check out that other video, like I said, if you want to see what's really fresh and new coming out next year. Some of them are console games, but the most will be obviously PC. And Survival is here to stay, and I'll be there every step of the way. I will see you, Ratbags, later.